Hey, it's uh, Alan So Blank. Today I'm gonna talk about weeks uh, 27 through 34 of my challenge to turn 1500 into 40,000 by 4.22.20. And I'm also going to talk about the Darwinian law of the market. I got the idea of the Dar of uh, that law after I was watching an interview from Kevin O'Leary, the guy from Shark Tank. He was uh, talking about the Darwinian law of business and I thought why not talk about the Darwinian law of the market. So uh, the that law states that businesses and stocks only the ones that are best suited for the market survive okay and all others will fail and so like a bear is a bear and a bull is a bull so if uh, i buy a stock and it becomes bearish I will just pull out my gun and shoot the bear in the woods and the kill should be stoic or like emotionless because uh, that's just the law of the market. It's like natural selection, not all stocks I buy will get give me a profit and it's okay. And uh, so anyway, also another thing about the market is the market is ruthless. It doesn't care about how I feel. So it doesn't care that I was almost giving up on my challenge. Okay, because uh, I almost blew up my account again. Uh, like I had 400 some dollars at one point and then I was down to like a only $100, uh, but this time I didn't refund my account because now commission fees are free on E-Trade, so uh, I could trade with just $100 and still make a profit if I make like 10, 5, 10% or so. Okay, so now, uh, so, so yeah, and then also I came up with like the Darwinian law of traders. So whether I like it or not, I'm in competition with other traders. And so traders with trades best suited um, for the market will survive. So I can say uh, some of those trades are for the winning traders are that they cut their losses quickly and they also take their profits quickly because they recognize that the market is bipolar. At any time it can have a major mood swing and go from feeling bullish to bearish. And uh, also they learn from uh, their mistakes and so and they track all their tr trades and so I've been struggling with not cutting my losses quickly and also sometimes not taking my profits quickly um, but also I know the number one trait that anyone who's successful has regardless of whether you're trading stocks or you, you want to do something else um, some other kind of business, they, the number one trait is that they always persevere. They never give up. The moment you give up, you're going to be left a rotten corpse in the jungle. Okay, the market will move on without you. You know, the other traders who succeed, you know, they don't care. Um, if you give up, there's just, uh, okay, that's... Uh, your loss. So anyway, um, so that's like the Darwinian laws that I came up with and uh, so now I will get into my trades.
Okay, so here's the trade from my 27th week of my challenge. So that's the chart, and then here is my trade recap if you want to read it. And uh, so on this trade, I basically bought, I should have bought where the blue circle was on the chart. This chart fit the midday perk pattern. There was consolidation from about like around eight to 10. And then I should have bought there where it perked up. Instead I chased and I didn't cut my loss quickly. Uh, Yeah, and then uh, I didn't have any trades on the 28th week, so now the 29th week. Um, so here are the charts. Uh, I did two trades. And so here's the caption. You can pause the video if you want to read the captions so here on this chart I bought this biotech company and uh, this stock almost looks like to kind of fit the midday perk pattern and I ended up this was a pretty good trade I didn't risk too much and I ended up selling I think a little into after hours. And then this trade here was a, an OTC, what I call like dip buying an OTC pump and dump. It had a major run up and then you can see it had a big red candle. And then the, on the day that it had the last candle, which was green, this was the day here I was buying the bounce I bought uh, around 20 cents and sold for like, I think 15% profit. And I could have made like an additional 15%. Okay, and so now here, um, I was uh, talking about now that I got to wait for news and a double bottom. And so you can read the trade recap if you want. And so here, this stock, I think it had no news, I said, so I shouldn't have even bought this stock. Um, so I just sold for a loss after the breakdown. And then this stock uh, here was when I was saying I should have waited for the double bottom, which there was clear, uh, clear double bottom around 12 o'clock on the chart. If I waited there then and bought there, it would have been a better trade because when I bought near 14, I was risking over 10%. Um, yeah, and those were those two trades there. And so here, this was where my balance was like 400. And now I started my losing streak. Oh, here, this was something else. Um, I was going to do like a YouTube review. And, uh, well, anyway, you can read like what happened, why I ended up not doing the YouTube review. Okay, so now on this week, the week, uh, so these are now my last two trades from the 30th week. So here are the charts. And then the captions. And, uh, so, 
And here, this was when I started noticing that I should buy the first dip in the morning when on the five minute chart when it has a double bottom and uh, the red to green move. And so on this chart that happened around 10 o'clock, uh, but I didn't buy there. Instead, I was trying to do like the double bottom pattern in the afternoon, which doesn't work as well. I didn't take my little profit when I could have, and then I didn't cut my loss quickly. And over here too, if it gaps up huge pre-market, like, uh, you know, like 75% or like 100% or more, and it holds its gains after it does the dip, and uh, so like here, this chart, it went from like 50 to 100, I mean 50 cents to $1, a little over a dollar. And then it had its double bottom and reversal at about like the fifth candle after um, market open. But I missed that double bottom there, that first dip there. And again, I bought in the afternoon and I didn't cut my loss quickly. And, uh, and then here. So now this is going on to my 31st week. And this is now when I was just getting big losses. And then it ended up being an 83% loss on the week. And uh, these are my captions. And then... Uh, um, again here, like with this chart, it did an overextended gap up. I could have bought or like the double bottom. Uh, and then this was also like at about the fifth candle after market open so after it says 11 19 on the chart so i missed that double bottom area um, and i you know i missed the dip and the double bottom and then i just bought like after the pattern happened so i kind of chased it and then I didn't really cut my loss that quickly there. And then uh, on uh, this trade here, um, this was one of, the, one of the stocks that I shouldn't have bought because pre-market, it gapped up 300%. It went from like seven to over 25. And then by the time it opened and had its first uh, dip um, it wasn't holding 50% of its pre-market gain so that's usually bearish when that does not happen so I shouldn't have even bought this but anyway you can clearly see I didn't cut my loss quickly and then over here on uh, this chart you can see that once it did the morning spike from like a dollar to two dollars um, and then it had its first dip and it kind of did its reversal and double bottom around one dollar and fifty cents and that was the time to buy so I could have bought like around maybe one sixty one dollar and sixty cents and uh, then you know it had its uh, another big spike from like 150 to three dollars and then when i bought i just bought there around the green circle a little under two dollars um thinking that okay shorts should cover here but i didn't take my 10 to 15 percent profit quickly um, I wanted more, and then this time you can see, like when I bought now, it didn't hold 50% of its second spike from a dollar fifty to three dollars. So that's why it didn't, you know, unlike on the first dip where it held 50%. 
Okay, and uh, that is... Uh, that's all for the 31st week. And so now on the 32nd week, I just... I did these two trades, and then you can see the caption. And so this trade I bought um, pre-market. Uh, and uh, this was overall a good trade. It was kind of like uh, the pre-market breakout. Um, but I didn't need to buy pre-market. And then uh, over here, this was kind of similar to that one trade where I said uh, last week um, that it gapped up 300%, but it didn't hold 50%. And so this also didn't hold 50% of its pre-market spike, which doesn't show on the chart. So that's why I shouldn't have even bought here. But I ended up selling on Black Friday around uh, for an average of like one dollar. Okay, and then here you can read here. And I was kind of talking about this like a bull is a bull and a bear is a bear. And then how the stock market has is like bipolar. And then I said, like, basically longs, they want the bull skulls, and shorts, they collect the bear skins. I was just using, like, a little analogy. So here's, I did one trade overnight. Here's the trade recap. And here's the chart. And so this one I bought after hours. It would have been a better buy if I bought um, close to 30 cents uh, right before the market closes because here you can see when it dipped from like 28 cents to 24 cents and it came right back up um, before close. So that could have been a short trap. So I could have bought there in anticipation of the breakout. And then, uh, anyway, here, I was almost going to sell for a loss, but it ended up opening green on the day. And then here was when I was saying, like, I fought the bull too long. I could have taken my, should have taken my profit after it failed to hold its pre-market breakout around 38 cents. Um, but I didn't, and I ended up... Um, and that ended up being a little loss. And so now here, finally on my 34th week, I'm saying now that my double bottom pattern is on fire. Okay, and then peach emoji, peach emoji, fire emoji. Okay, and then this is my trade recaps. And so here you can see now, you know, I'm adapting to the market because I have to adapt or die. So now I'm starting to play my double bottom pattern. So this stock is a little, uh, you know, not really not a penny stock, but the double bottom pattern still played out here. You can see a kind of double bottom close to 22. And I bought once after the first uh, green candle there, the double bottom held, and then I ended up selling, taking my profit quickly after it broke, and it showed a little weakness. And then here on this trade, you can see like this one, it does show the pre-market breakout from like a little uh, from like three dollars to over seven dollars and then at the time that i bought it it looked like a reversal and it, i could say this was holding 50 percent 
of its pre-market spike, um, but then the stock ended up, you know, breaking the $5 support, and I sold for a little loss, but then you can see that that candle there with the red circle, that's a hammer candle, and so that's bullish, and so after that candle, I could have rebought again um, before it broke out. So my pattern ended up playing here, playing out the double bottom pattern, but I missed. I just didn't rebuy um, in time. But I ended up rebuying the same stock after it went from $9 and then it went down to like $7.20 did like a little double bottom and I thought okay now shorts are in pain and they should be covering right about there so I bought there and then I ended up selling into strength into the breakout that was like a 30% profit and so you could see so now you know um, this week was a, a good week I'm starting to adapt and uh, yeah, so that's all. So now this is the pattern that I want to focus on. So next week, I'm going to try to look for the same double bottom patterns on these stocks. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. It was a little long, but I want to document. I was just falling behind and I want to show you what the pathway to success looks like. And it does have failures along the way. Okay, goodbye.